Brittany Griner's trial started Friday just outside of Moscow. And if you want to know what's going on with her, best not to think of it as a trial. When you speak to any expert on Russian government or criminal justice, U.S. officials, they all say the same thing. It's a show trial. It's theater. It's a foregone conclusion that she'll be found guilty and sentenced probably very heavily. But the larger issue is a negotiation between the United States and Russian governments. What people see is an eventual swap between Brittany Griner and somebody who's in custody in the U.S. prison right now. Russia has floated through its state media that the person they want in return is a man named Victor Boot, who's currently doing a 25-year sentence for financing terrorism. They've asked for him before when they've had U.S. detainees and the U.S. government has turned them down. This time, though, it could be different. She's not the only one in detention over there. There's an American man named Paul Whelan who was arrested in December 2018, and he's still there. There is a recognition that the Biden administration would have a very hard time bringing one of them home and not the other. It's just too politically difficult. Plus, sources say they simply want to get them home. What's going on in court, it's not a trial in the sense that most Americans would understand. You don't have two lawyers going at it back and forth. There are no theatrics. It's an incredibly dull procedure that is weighted so heavily against the defendants as to be almost comical, unless you're one of those defendants. For the most part, a judge takes the prosecutor's case and just reads it into the record. They'll call witnesses. Prosecutors will get to do that. There have already been a couple of customs officials who appeared in court and answered questions. Uh, but it can drag on for weeks and months. In the U.S., it would seem like a fairly simple case. Either she had vape cartridges containing hashish oil or she didn't. In the U.S., there would be a lab report. The defense would have a chance to challenge that evidence. A judge would get to decide whether it's admissible or not, and a jury would decide who's telling the truth. There's no jury in this case. It's just the judge. And there's an incredible catch-22 when it comes to anything supporting the defense. They can investigate the case before the trial just like anybody else. But if they come up with exculpatory information, they have to offer it to the prosecution. The prosecutor may or may not include that evidence in the case file. So if the prosecutor doesn't do that, the experts I spoke to said you often end up with a situation where the defense tries to raise that evidence in court and the judge will say, well, I can't consider it because it's not in the case file. The fact is more than 99% of defendants in Russia are found guilty as it is. One of the experts I spoke to said it's a fantasy for most Russians to think about acquittal. So when it comes to somebody like Brittany Griner, who is clearly the subject of a, of a political issue, he says then it becomes a double fantasy. They're not even due back in court until Thursday. And as one, one U.S. lawyer who has tried cases in Russian court says, the judge will sometimes postpone it for no obvious reason. Sometimes you have people show up in court and then suddenly a witness doesn't show up and you're adjourned for another two weeks. It could be weeks or months until there's some sort of verdict in this case. In the meantime, negotiations are going to continue between the two governments. She actually hasn't entered a plea yet, but the experts I spoke to said that it may be in her best interest to plead guilty regardless of the facts of the case. She's not going to win. They know that. But if there's going to be a prisoner swap, there will have to be an admission of guilt. Russia almost never would make a deal like that without getting some piece of paper from her signed saying, okay, I did it. It has more to do with saving face than anything else. If she does plead guilty, it's going to be a strategy to try to move things along with the negotiations. But there was also some hope that maybe it makes life a little easier for her in the meantime. There's no guarantee that pleading guilty would mean she's somehow treated, you know, it's, it's not, no one's going to confuse a Russian jail with a five-star hotel. But if any little effort, any gesture makes her life easier for now and gets her home more quickly, they want to do it.